Lift up our hand and adore him. Let's lift up our hand and worship our Lord, our God. Wherever you are joining me from today, I want you to lift up him. Let's celebrate our Lord. Let's celebrate our God. Let's worship him. He's our Lord. He's our God. He's our maker. He's our healer. He's our sustainer. I want you to lift up your hand and bless him. Lift up your hand and give him thanks. Lift up your hand and give him praise for today. I want you to say thank you, Jesus, for the gift of life. I want you to say thank you, Jesus, for your life, for your marriage, for your home, for your marriage, for your business, for your career. I want you to say thank you, Jesus, for sustaining you. I want you to say thank you, Jesus, for helping you. Hey, I'm Mr. Hey, I'm Mima. Some of us are still saying the year is still new, the year is still fresh. Today is the 15th day of this month. Which means we have spent 14 days out of this year. Today is 15 day of this month, the 15th day in this year. But hear me, sir, hear me, man. As little as it is, there are many people that went into this year together, but today they are nowhere to be found. Many are dead right now. Many, they are, their family don't even know their position. They don't know their situation. They don't know what is going on. They can't find them. But if you are listening to me right now, if you are hearing me right now, if you are logging right now, if you are watching right now, why not just lift up a hand and appreciate God? Why not lift up a hand and bless His holy name? Why not lift up your hand and give Him thanks and give Him praise and worship Him? Our Lord is good. Thank you, mighty Father. Lord, we give you praise, we give you honor. In Jesus' name, we are worship. Our Lord, our God, want to say thank you for this hour. We bless your holy name in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks, we give you praise for this wonderful moment. Thank you for the past week. To you be all glory, to you be all honor, to you be all adoration in the name of Jesus. My Lord, my God, as we come before you today, I ask that Father, let heaven open upon us in the name of Jesus. Heavens of mercy, heavens of favor, heavens of lifting, heavens of revelation, heavens of divine encounter. Father, let it open upon each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Today, my Lord, my God, arise in your power, arise in your might. Visit every one of us today in the name of Jesus. And at the end of today, Father, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I welcome every one of us to today's online Sunday service in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are logging in from, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. I welcome every one of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are just joining us for the very first time, today is the very first time that you are joining us on this platform. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. I say you are welcome in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I celebrate every one of you and those of you who are members of this ministry that you are joining in right now, that you are logging in right now, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. My name is Ariola Oreolua, the prayer coordinator of this online prayer ministry, and this is Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network is an online prayer ministry where we come together in the place of prayer to pray unto the living God with the help of Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as you are joining us today, I welcome you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Last week, by the special grace of God, last week we start on a journey. Journey with God this year. How do we journey with God? How 
do you and I journey with God? Because the Lord God must be the one to lead us this year. Praise the Lord. The Lord God must be the one to lead you, to lead me. If God is the one leading you, if God is the one leading me, we are sure that he's going to lead us aright. Praise the Lord. So we start a journey, how to journey with God this year. And last, last week I shared with us that for you to journey with God this year, you must know him. You must know him. There's no way you can follow somebody that you don't know or know or that you don't know nothing about. So for you to journey with God this year, for God to be the one leading you this year, you must know him. You must understand him. You must know how he lead, how he speak, how he, how he relate. Amen. You must know him as a person. You must know his personality. Praise the Lord. So and I share with us, I told us that, that for us to follow him, for us, for him to lead us, there are three things we must know. Number one, we must know that he lead through his spirit, Holy Spirit. He lead through his spirit, Holy Spirit. And uh, if he lead through his spirit, the Holy Spirit, we must know the Holy Spirit. Because if a man is to lead you, you must know that man. If a man is to lead you in the journey of life, if a man is going to lead you to a particular place, you must know that man, you must know everything about that man. So I share with us that his spirit is the one to lead us. His spirit is the one to lead us. And if the Holy Spirit is the one to lead us, there are three things that you must know about the Holy Spirit. Number one, you must know about this divine nature. Divine nature. The spiritual aspect of it. And I share with us some of his divine nature. That is called as God. Amen. That is called as the Spirit of God. That is considered to be God. Is treated as equal to God the Father and God the Son. Amen. Praise the Lord. I share with us according to Hebrew 9 verse 14. That is eternal. That is self-existence. That is omnipresent. That is omni-science. Amen. I share a lot of things with us about his divine nature. And the second thing I told us that we must know about is his personal, I mean his human nature. If you know about him as if you know things about his divine nature, you must also know about his human nature. Today, we're supposed to look at the second aspect of Holy Spirit who is to lead us in the journey of life. His human nature. Praise the Lord. But by the Spirit of Holy Spirit, by the leaders of the Lord, I received a message from Zion this morning, early this morning. I received a message from God this morning that I need to deliver urgent. Praise the Lord. So, if time permits me, after I deliver the message that God asked me to deliver this morning, we go to the second aspect of it is human nature. If God did not permit us, by the special grace of God, I will come back next week. If the coming of the Lord is tarry, if rapture has not come, amen, we come next week and we look at the second things about Holy Spirit is human nature. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. But before we go, I deliver the message of God, which I received through revelation this morning. While I was praying, hear me, sir, hear me, man. Let me quickly pass this one of two information. Deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. By the special grace of God, come Monday 6th to Friday 10th of February. Amen. It's five days, deliverance, online deliverance. We are going to run deliverance online, five days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Praise the Lord. Monday 6th to Friday 10th of February this year, we are having our first online deliverance session for this year. We have been doing this online deliverance session going to four years now. Yes, you hear me, four years. Amen. We have the record online. Amen. We have the previous edition. They are still there on the Facebook by the special grace of God. And for every edition, God wrote his miracle. God did marvelous thing in our midst. So for this year, year 2023, we are going to open it up with five days, our online deliverance session. The theme is, let my people go. God is speaking to your life. God is speaking to those altars, those shrines. God is speaking to those principalities. God is speaking to those rulers of darkness. Anything that is holding you back, anything that is holding you down, God is speaking to them. God is giving an order, let my people go. Let their marriage go. Let their business go. Let their health go. Let their career go. Praise the Lord. So join me during these five days online delivery session as you cry unto the living God. Let my people go. Amen. For you to join 
is free, deliverance is free, prayer is free, you need to register online so that we know who and who are ready, amen, and also so that we'll be able to pray along with you, amen, and also during the course of the deliverance session, if we need to minister to us based on what God revealed, one or one will be able to communicate to you, amen. For you to join, just check uh, the online uh, this page on online or send a message to plus two three four eight zero six two six eight six two double five plus two three four eight zero six two six eight six two double five it's on whatsapp number i will send you the link amen it's just an online two minutes you will feed them just we need your name we need your location we need your whatsapp number and your email so in case if, and if there's any prayer request we need them so that in case if there's any word for you, we send it to you. We don't like coming online, sharing prophecy and revelation, personal prophecy and revelation. We like to send it to individual. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. So early this morning, so if you want to join, just send a message to, just send deliverance, online deliverance. Send it to that number. Amen. We get send you the link so that you go to the link and uh, put in Feel it. Amen. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Early this morning, while I was going over the message for today, the message that we're supposed to look at for today, amen, journey, how to journey with the Lord, part two, the woman nature of Holy Spirit. While I was going through it, the Lord gave me a message for somebody online. Praise the Lord. And uh, what is the message? John 21 Verse 3. Listen to this. John 21, verse 3. John 21, verse 3. It was a story of Peter. After Jesus Christ was arrested, what happened? In John 21, verse 3, Peter told, because Jesus Christ was nowhere to be found again, Peter told the other disciples, I go a fishing. What is the meaning? I am going fishing. He told them, I am going fishing. Some of us will need to look at why Peter have to come and told the other disciple why he is going fishing. What led to him going fishing? We know him before that he was a fisherman. Why did he abandon the fishing? Some of us said because Jesus Christ called him. No, that was not the reason why he abandoned the fishing. Not because Jesus Christ called him. Some of us think that because Jesus Christ met him at that time, that was not the first time that Jesus Christ is having an encounter with Jesus. He once had an encounter with Jesus before Jesus Christ told him, I will make you fishers of men. At the point where Jesus Christ borrowed his boat to preach, and after that Jesus Christ said, launch to the deep, he launched to the deep, and he had a major testimony, an avalanche of testimony. And Jesus Christ said, follow me. Some of us said, maybe that was the reason why he followed Jesus. No. There was something that happened there. Jesus Christ said something there into his life, which made Peter to abandon his fishing and follow Jesus. Please follow me and listen very well. In that John 21, 23, Peter told them, other disciples, because Jesus Christ to them was dead at that time. He said, I am going fishing. I am going back. To that business, I am going back to that environment. I am going back to that business. I am going back to that environment. I am going back to that people that I abandoned to follow Jesus because he abandoned them. He abandoned other fishermen. He abandoned the fishing business. He abandoned people. He abandoned that environment, the water environment. He abandoned the trend of his life. How he used to, what he used to do before. He abandoned everything to follow Jesus. But in John 21 verse 3, he told the other disciple, Now that Jesus Christ was not here again, I am going back to that environment. I am going back to that business. I am going back to that group. I am going back to those people. The first question we ask, why did he abandon those people? Yes, I am. In Luke 5, 1 to 10, in Luke 5, 1 to 10, in Luke 5, 1 to 10, Luke 5, 1 to 10, was when Jesus Christ met Peter and uh, 
Uh, let's look at it so that it won't look as if he's just telling us, he's just quoting it, maybe it's wrong. Open your Bible to the book of uh, Luke. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, 1 to 10. In that Luke chapter of, uh, 5, 1 to 10, Amen. For so Jesus, the Bible said, He saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. They are true for the day. Praise the Lord. For still, he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's. Simon's is talking about Peter. And pray, he begged, that he would thrust a little to the land. They want to start and talk people from it. He want to use his bowl. First of all, when he had left speaking, when he finished speaking, when he's finished preaching, when he's finished praying for people, he asked Peter, launch into the deep and let down your net. Verse 5, Simon answered and said unto him, Master, you only address somebody that you know. You only address somebody that you are apprentice under them as master. You only address your boss as master. This was not the first time Peter will be having a encounter with Jesus. Peter has been under the tutelage of Jesus before now. I will show you. But it was not a koinonia. It was not a regular. It was on and off. When he's less busy, he will come. When he's not busy, when he's less busy, he come. Other time, he will go for his family and go for his normal business. But when he's less busy, he will come to hang around him. Yes, he's there in the Bible. In John 1, 40 to 42. In John 1, 40 to 42. In John chapter 1, verse 40 to 42. This was the first encounter of Peter with Jesus. Peter, Jesus Christ did not find Peter. But Jesus Christ called Andrew. Andrew was the brother of Peter. So, Andrew, in verse uh, 40 to 42, Andrew had to go and call his brother. His brother's name was Peter. So, he went and met his brother. One of the two, which had John speak, follow him, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Verse 42, he first found his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him. Do you see? He brought him. He told Peter, we have found the Messiah that I'll be talking about. The man that John the Baptist was talking about. I have found him. Let's go. He now brought Peter to Jesus. And in verse 22, he brought him to, he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, when Jesus Christ saw Peter for the very first time, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Please underline it. Thou art as Simon, the son of Jonah, and thou shalt be called Severus, with the interpretation stone. This was the first encounter of Peter and Jesus. When he first encountered Jesus, Jesus looked at him and said, Your name is Simon, the son of what? You shall be called Severus. You shall be called. This was the first encounter. So from there, when you look at it, the following day, as Jesus was going forth, all, all of them, they are following him. But not of Mushua. Not all the time. They will go and do whatever their business. And not in a while, they will come to follow him. So, from this point, Jesus Christ become his master. But he still hold on to his business. So, let's go back to that um, Luke 5, 1 to 10. After he had encountered Jesus, Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 10. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 10. This is the message for one of you today. That God said, I should tell you. Luke chapter 5, 1 to 10. And after Jesus can make use of his sheep, let's look at verse 10. And so it was so. James and John, son of Sebudi, which were partnered with Simon, those who are in the sheep with uh, Peter. And Jesus said unto Simon, not all, to all of them, to Simon. Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. From now on, instead of you to be catching fish, you will be catching men. And when they have brought their sheep to the land, they suffer so called and they follow him. 
This was when Peter surrendered everything and followed him. But he has been following, he did not forsook all. He still hold on to his business. When he's not doing his business, he will follow him. When, when it's time for him to go to work, he will come to work. And when he finishes fishing, it's less short time, he will follow him. But here, the Bible said, they forsook all and they begin to follow him. Peter followed Jesus based on prophecy, based on promise. What is the promise? He told him this time around, the very first time, Jesus said, you are, Pete, you are Simon, the son of Jonah, and thou shalt be called stone. Peter did not forsake all at that time. He did not follow him fully. But here, Jesus can say, I will make you, don't fear, abandon your business, follow me, and I will make you to be fishers of men. And because of that promise, Peter followed Jesus. I repeat again, because of the promise of Jesus Christ for Peter, Peter was expecting, because Jesus Christ said, I will begin to be fishers of men. He followed Jesus, waiting for the manifestation. One day, I will begin to catch men. One day, I will be a leader of men. One day, I will be director. One day, instead of me, to be running after fish, men will be running after me as their head, as their God. This was expectation of Peter. This was the reason why Peter followed Jesus. But after many days, after many years, and this thing did not come to pass, and Jesus Christ was dead. He, Jesus Christ promised Peter, here sir, here ma, Jesus promised Peter that he's going to make him a ruler. That is the meaning of that word. He's going to make him the head. And Jesus that is going to make him the head is dead now. So he's going to make Peter the head of men, nobody. Which means that prophecy will not be fulfilled again. After many days, after many days, after many times, Peter thought about the reason why he followed Jesus. I followed Jesus because Jesus Christ promised me. I, pro I followed Jesus because Jesus Christ gave me a promise and revelation. But after many years, Jesus Christ is nowhere to be found again. And because he's nowhere to be found, the prophecy cannot come to pass. So it's better I go back to my business. It's better I go back to my people. It's better I go back to those things that I've been doing before that is giving me joy instead of following unfulfilled prophecy or unfulfilled revelation. I don't know how many of you are online this morning. I don't know many of you, how many of you are tired this morning. I don't know how many of you are in that position of Peter this morning. Oh no, you promised me and I stand upon that prophecy. I'll be waiting for the manifestation of that prophecy. But where are you, oh Lord? People are mocking me. People are harassing me. People are asking me, where is your God? People are telling me, you follow God, you follow Jesus. Where is that Jesus in your life? God, where are you? I don't know how many of you are online this morning. I don't know how many of you are on Facebook this morning that that is your position. I don't know how many of you are, are, how many of you are on Instagram this morning. I don't know how many of you are listening or you are watching via any of our podcast uh, platform this morning. I don't know how many of you are watching through YouTube this morning. That that is your situation. That you are tired. That you are weary of that unfulfilled prophecy. To some of you, you are just like in that position of Peter. You have been looking back. Yes, you have not turned back, but you have been looking back to what you have missed, to what you have left. And you have said, have I not made mistake of following Jesus? If I have not made a mistake, where are the prophecy? Where are the fulfillment? Where are the answer to prayer? Hear the word of the Lord God to you this morning. Peter was tired. Because he that will fulfill the prophecy for him is dead. So he knows that there is no way for him again. And he said, I am going back. There is this thing about my people. They say it about my in my mother's tongue, Yoba language. See If we cannot journey again, if the front is difficult for us to go, maybe we come back to where we are going from, we are coming from. If you cannot go continue this journey, it's better we go back to where we are coming from. This was the issue of Peter. 
the children of Israel, they go to the Red Sea. The Red Sea was blocked. And they told uh, 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 Moses, you promised us. You said God is going to lead us. Where is that your God that said he's going to lead us? We follow you because of the promise. But where is that promise? How many of you have been following Jesus blindly? I use that word, blindly. Because if you need to follow God, you must follow him blindly. How many of you have been following God without holding anything back? But today, it's like you are before your rest seat. Today, you are at the crossroad. Today, you are tired, you are weary. God is saying I should bring you a word today. Daniel, take your pen and take your paper and write this scripture down. We only go through one or two of them and we pray. Take your pen, please. If you are in that position, take your pen, take your paper. If you are not in that position, you may write, you may not write. But if today's message you are saying, Pastor, God has sent you to me this morning. I am tired, I am weary of waiting. Oh, people have been giving you Listen why you need to follow them. Why you need to go back. Hey, my brother, my sister, take your pen. Daniel 11, verse 1. Write all the scripture down. We look at one or two of them. Daniel 11, verse 1. Isaiah 44, 26 to 28. Isaiah 44, 26 to 28. 2 Samuel 725 2 Samuel 725 Psalm 68 verse 9 Psalm 68 verse 9 Mark 16 verse 20 Mark 16 verse 20 Hebrew 2 verse 4 Hebrew 2 verse 4 John 2 11 John 2 11. John 2 11. Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. When Peter said, I am going fishing, in that uh, John, in that Luke 5 1 to 10. In that John, sorry, John 21. In that John 21, he told the other people, I cannot be waiting for unfulfilled prophecy again. Jesus Christ promised me. That he will make me the head, he will make me the ruler, he will make me the governor, he will make me the head, fishers of men, that means head of men. This was the prophecy, this was the revelation, this was the reason I follow him. But Jesus Christ has abandoned me, I can't find him again, he's dead now. So there's no way that prophecy can come to pass. So if it's not going to come to pass, let me go back to where I'm coming from. John 21. John 21. But what happened? Jesus Christ appeared unto them. And uh, Jesus Christ performed another miracle before them. Follow me. In verse 12, Jesus Christ said unto them, Come and dine and wine with me. In verse 15, you all remember the first encounter of Peter and Jesus when Andrew, the brother of Peter, brought him before Jesus. And Jesus Christ met him. What did Jesus Christ say? Jesus Christ said, You are Simon, the son of Jonas. You are Simon, the son of Jonas. And he, he called him what? He called him stone. From today, you shall be stone. But hear me. When Jesus, Peter went back, Jesus Christ double crossed him. Because Peter thought that the prophecy cannot be fulfilled again. Jesus Christ cannot be found again. But Peter. This time around, he encountered Peter, verse 15. So when they had died, Jesus Christ said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas. The same way Jesus Christ called him the first encounter, Jesus Christ called him again. The same way. From that time, Jesus Christ never called him Simon, son of Jonas again. But this time around, Peter had encounter with Jesus. Simon, son of Jonas. If you have forgotten your first encounter with me, Simon, son of Jonas, I'm taking you back to your first encounter with me. If you have forgotten, I did not forget. 
And if I did not forget your first encounter that lead to the second encounter where I promise you, here am I, I'm still here. Hear me, sir, hear me, man. You are online today. You are tired, you are weary. Jesus Christ is saying, I should tell you number one, remember your first encounter with him. Remember your first encounter with him. Jesus Christ is calling you today. If you are online, you have missed it because you are tired. You have gone back to dip your hand into a courtesy. You have gone back to Egypt to help yourself. Jesus Christ is calling you back today. Simon, son of Jonas. Jesus is calling you back today. Do you know why he's calling you back? Do you know why he's calling you back? Because it is, it is your season for the manifestation, for the confirmation of those words. But if you don't come back, there's no way it will be fulfilled. And if you are there, you are still holding on to him, congratulations. Don't look back, don't turn back. It is your season for manifestation. Fast season. Jesus has call him again. Simon, son of Jonah, if you have forgotten, I'm calling you again. Verse 17. Simon, son of Jonah, thou lovest me. And he now said, Peter said, I love you, you know this. And Jesus Christ said, Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Jesus Christ said, I will make you the rulers, the fishers of men. This time around, Jesus Christ already have the sheep. Jesus Christ already have the congregation. Jesus Christ handed, handed them over unto Peter. Take my sheep. Take the men. Feed them. They all belong to you. This is the confirmation of the promise of Jesus for Peter. Instead of Peter looking around to gather men together, Jesus Christ gathered them together and gave them unto Peter. And from that day, Peter become their head. Hope to today, Peter is the head of all Christianity all over the world. That day, when Peter abandoned and went back to his former business, Jesus Christ encountered him and Jesus Christ called him back onto repentance, onto the first meeting with him. And what happened? There was fulfillment. Amen. Instead of him to sweat and struggle to gather men, Jesus Christ, the men that he has gathered, he has given them unto him. What you want is to be the leaders of men. Take all these men that have gathered, the sheep, take them and feed them. And as a result of that, the promise of Jesus for Peter to be the leaders was fulfilled. Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. Daniel, the scripture that I gave us, Daniel. 11 verse 1 Daniel 11 verse 1 Daniel 11 verse 1 Also I you see I there capital letter is talking about God in the first year of Darius the murder even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him to confirm and to strengthen him to confirm hear me sir hear me man I don't know the world that you have holding on to I don't know the promise of God in your life today this week this month this year, the Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. As the Lord confirm it, the testimony of that confirmation will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. It will strengthen you. It will strengthen you. It will strengthen you. It will strengthen you. Isaiah 44, 26 to 28. Isaiah 44, 26 to 28. Isaiah 44, 26 to 28. That confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messenger. That, that confirmed, that confirmed the word of the Lord to your life. The counsels of God over your life this week. This week that we are going into, this very month, this very year. The Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. What is that prophecy? What is that revelation that you are holding on to all this year? And it's like you are tired. It's like you are weary. It's like when will it come to pass? I have been waiting over this prophecy over this year for many years. Hear me, sir. Hear me, ma. As the Lord live it this very year. The Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. Simon, son of Jonah. 
Remember the promise. For this is his time. And the Lord confirm it. I pray for someone online. In the name of Jesus. That word, that prophecy, that revelation that you hold on to. And as a result of that, you have been following Jesus blindly, blindly, passionately all this year without looking back. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this year, this week, this month, the Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm it. The Lord will confirm it. Second Samuel 7, 25. Second Samuel 7, 25. And now, O oh Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant, Orelua Ariola, con- concerning his household, every member of my family, concerning this ministry, Pray Goose Network, concerning every one of you on Facebook, concerning every one of you on YouTube, concerning every one of you on Instagram, concerning every one of you listening to this message, that word that you have spoken concerning your servant, concerning our household, establish it forever and do as thou hast said that means confirm it establish it do as thou hast said you that person that you are tired of that prophecy you that person that people have been mocking you your husband has been mocking you your wife has been mocking you your mother has been mocking you your father has been mocking you your relative has been mocking you people around you have been mocking you you call yourself a prayer person where are your testimony where are the confirmation where are the signs and wonders in your life? Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, that this week, this month, this year, there shall be confirmation in the name of Jesus. There shall be confirmation. 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 In the name of Jesus. Psalm 68, verse 9. Psalm 68, verse 9. Psalm 68, verse 9. Thou, O oh Lord, this sent a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thy inheritance when it is weary. Thou didst send plenty rain, plenty rain, plenty rain to your servant. And you do what? You confirm. You confirm the word of your servant. You confirm the word of your servant when he was weary. As many of you that you are weary today, as many of you that you are tired today, as many of you that you are saying, Lord, where is my fulfillment of your world? Where is the manifestation of that world? Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. The Lord will visit you today in the name of Jesus. The Lord will visit you this week in the name of Jesus. The Lord will visit you this very month in the name of Jesus. I love the way some, some Bible translation puts that Psalm 68 verse 9. Psalm 68, verse 9. I love, I, I try to look at some, some, some translation. Hear me, sir, hear me, man. I still want to pray for that one person online. That is saying, Pastor, today's message is just for me. Today's message is just for me. Look at easy, easy uh, translation uh, fashion. English, uh, easy English uh, translation. He said, Thou, O oh Lord, this send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thine inheritance. Don't God send rain to confirm his inheritance. Hear me, sir, hear me, man. The testimony that you will receive today that will confirm that you serve the living God. The testimony, the manifestation, the release of your breakthrough to confirm that you pray unto the living God. To confirm that you serve the living God. Today, let there be a release in the name of Jesus. Let there be a release in the name of Jesus. Let there be a release in the name of Jesus. Let there be a release in the name of Jesus. Let there be a release in the name of Jesus. John 2, verse 11. John 2, verse 11. John 2, verse 11. John chapter 2, verse 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. This was the first miracle. His disciples, Peter and the other people that had been following him, Apart from the miracle of um, Peter having a lot of fish, no other miracle. So which means they did not believe in him, they just follow him. People like Peter. But the Bible said, after he turned water to wine in Galilee, wine represents joy. Joy, water, 
source of life was turned to wine. Water was turned to wine. Water is the source of life. It was turned to wine. Wine represents joy. What is the meaning? Your source of life that has not been giving you joy, God turned it to joy, which means your life, your marriage, your business, your career. From this morning, we begin to give you joy in the name of Jesus. And the Bible said, this was the first miracle and a disciple believed in him. His disciple, John 2, verse 11. And a disciples believe on him. They believe on him. The miracle, the signs and wonder, the events that will happen in your life, that your friend, that your family, that those that are following you, that those that are watching you, that they will believe in you. That they will believe in your God. I decree, I declare. If you can say a loud amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 That event that will make people to believe in you. That truly you are a Christian. Truly, you are a servant of God. I decree, I declare. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Last scripture before you take some prayer this morning. Mark 16, verse 20. They went forth. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. That is the last verse in the, the book of Mark. Mark 16, verse 20. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the world with signs following them. From today, anywhere you go, you go back to your marriage, you go back to your business, you go back to your career, you go back to your environment. Hear me, sir. The Bible said they went forth. This year is our year of breaking forth. They went forth and preached everywhere. Your assignment in life. What God has asked you to do in life, in that your marriage, in that your business, they went forth, they continued with their assignment, and God was confirming it with signs and wonder. As you go for this day, I decree, I declare, let the Lord God confirm your life, your marriage, your business, your career, or your earth, whatever you lay your hand upon, let that be confirmation in the name of Jesus. With signs and wonder, with testimony, 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 in the name of Jesus. Before you pray, two messages for you, sir. Two messages for you, man. Don't go back. Remember your first love. Remember your first encounter with Jesus. The promise of God of, over your life. The promise of God over your marriage. Though for the past month, for the past years, for the past days, for the past hour, it look as if where is Jesus in your life? Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, don't be weary. Don't be tired. Don't turn back that is available for you. That this season it will arise. This season it will show forth in your life. This season it will show forth in your marriage. This season it will show forth in everything that concerns you. And there shall be signs and wonder. There shall be miracle that will make people to say, Come, you want to follow your God in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Before I go today, I want you to take two or three prayers. But before we take those prayers, if you are online, this message is for you, but you know that you have back. You are back from the track. You have missed the track because you are no longer following Christ again. You are tired of the prophecy. You are tired of the revelation. You have not seen Jesus like Peter and you left what God asked you to do. You go back to your former ways. God is calling you back today. Today is another day of recovery. Today is another day that God wants to visit you. God called him one more time, Simon, son of Jonah, because that was the very first encounter he had. That was how Jesus Christ addressed him. Jesus Christ is addressing you today to come back unto him. Because this is the season, this is the hour that he wants to manifest, that he wants to confirm that word. And if you have not given your life to Christ, he's calling you to come. Come. No matter how weary you are, no matter how long you have been on that journey, Jesus Christ is calling you today. Come. I want to take over. And he will take over in the name of Jesus. You are there. You just want me to pray with you. You are saying, Pastor, I have missed it. Oh, Pastor, I am the one I have vacillated, but I am ready to turn back. 
you are welcome in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Just lay your hand on your chest. Just lay your hand on your chest. Lay your hand on your chest. Are you ready? Lay your hand on your chest. I pray for every one of you. Say after me. Say, Father, say I come to you today. Say, have mercy on me. I can't hear you. Say, Father, say I come to you today. Say, have mercy on me. I can't hear you. Say, Father, say I come to you today. Say, have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Say, I repent. Say, I repent of my ways. Say, I confess them. Say, today. I can't hear you. Say, today. Say, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Come and rule and reign in Jesus' name. As you have said that simple prayer, I pray for you. Let Jesus Christ come into your life. Let him come and rule and reign in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So now every one of us, we are just going to decree. You are going to decree them and declare them. The first prayer, say I decree. Say I declare that this season, that this month, that this week, that this year, say Father, we confirm his word in my life. I'm not saying you should pray. I say you decree. Do you hear me? You are a king. You are a royal priesthood. A king don't pray. A pray. A king don't beg. A king give an order. Jesus Christ, in the book of Revelation chapter 1, said, Jesus has made us a king and a prince unto him. He has made us a priest and a prince unto him. So you are a prince, a royal priesthood. So as a result of that, you don't, you don't beg, you decree. The Bible says you shall decree it and it shall be established unto you. Say in the name of Jesus. Say this season. Say this month. Do you see the way I'm praying it? I'm not saying you should say it. You decree it with authority. Say in the name of Jesus. Say this week. This season. This month. This year. Say the Lord will confirm his word with testimony. With signs and wonder in my life. In the name of Jesus. Say Father. Say this week. This month, this year, this season, confirm your word with signs and wonder in my life. Say in the name of Jesus. Say, I enforce. As a king, you enforce an authority. When you decree a thing, it becomes an order. Say in the name of Jesus. Say, I enforce miracles, signs, wonder to begin to reign in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear you again? Say in the name of Jesus. Say I enforce miracles, signs, wonders to begin to reign in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus. Say miracle, signs, wonder that we announce God in my life, in my marriage, in my business, in my career. Say in the name of Jesus. Say begin to happen. Say begin to happen. Say begin to happen. Miracles. Signs and wonder that we are not God in every area of my life. I decree, I declare, begin to happen in Jesus' name. Say testimonies, testimonies that sound like lies. Yes, like as if this is not the opposite of truth is lie. When something looks too too good, people say, Are you are you sure that it's not lie? So hear me. Say testimony that sound like lies. Say overshadow my life. Say testimony that look like dream. That look like dream. Say manifest in my life. Say grace to be preferred. To be favored. Say rest upon me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Say I call forth testimony. Wonders. Open doors. Help. Breakthrough. Breaking forth. Increase, enlargement, fruitfulness, wonders. I call them forth to manifest in my life, in my marriage, in my business, in my career, in the name of Jesus. Can you begin to call them forth in the name of Jesus? Sense and wonder, open doors, lifting, healing. What are those things that you are expecting from God? Begin to call them forth in the name of Jesus. Say, I call them forth. I call them forth. Testimony, wonders. Open doors. Say, I call them forth in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. As the Lord the God have decreed and declared, 
as the Lord God has said that this season he want to manifest, he want to confirm his word. I pray for every one of you online. I pray for every one of you listening to this message. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. At this point of confirmation, I reject manipulation in your life in the name of Jesus. In that business, I reject manipulation. In your marriage, I reject manipulation. Concerning your health, I reject manipulation. The Lord will confirm His word with signs and wonder in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm His word with His abundance of resources in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm His word with testimony in your life in the name of Jesus. Event, event that will happen that will make people to honor God in your life. Event that will happen that will make people to say yes. Did in, sincerely this one serve the living God? He found that will happen that many people to lift up their hand and glorify God in your life. I decree, I declare this week, this month, this year in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your career, concerning your head. Let it manifest in the name of Jesus. Receive it 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 in the name of Jesus. So shall he be. Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. If you have been blessed today, you should know. That this is your season for you to manifest. This is your season for God to confirm His word in your life. Why not just lift up your hand and shout seven loud hallelujah? Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give. Before we go today, let's not forget deliver our five days online deliverance is coming. Monday 6 to Friday, 10th of February. Amen. Let my people go. God wants to confirm those words. Anything that is holding you back that is saying you will not manifest it. God want to show forth in that area. Join me during the five days. It's fasting, uh, fasting and prayer session. Amen. Monday 6 to Friday 10th of February. Amen. Online deliverance by the special grace of God. Let my people go. For you to be part of it. Amen. Just send a message to plus 234-80-6268-6255. Or if you are on our WhatsApp platform, I believe you must have received a link to it. Go on the link, fill in the form, and uh, by the special grace of God, the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. And you have been blessed today. You are saying, Pastor, I have been blessed. Amen. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I want to give a seed. I want to give an offering. I want to support this vision. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. When you look at the comment section now, my brother has helped us to put the online platform there where you can give online through your card. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Or just send a message to plus 234 Amen. We send you the candidate. If you are on Facebook right now, amen. One of my brothers helped us to put the online uh, link there where you can give online. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Till we meet again on Friday for our communion service. On next week Sunday for another online Sunday service. Go forth into this week and let the Lord God begin to confirm His word. In your life with testimony, with lifting, with joy, Jesus' name. Once again, my name is Ariola, Ariola, the prayer coordinator of this online praying ministry, this the praying Eagles Network. God bless you all, Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, praise the living Jesus. Dear father, mother, uncle, auntie, married, single, boy, girl, man, woman, brother, sister, and friend. You and I will one day leave this world and our spirit will appear on the other side. Will you be allowed to enter heaven? The only way to enter heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and walk in righteousness. If you have not given your life to Jesus or you once did and you backslid it, you started living in sin, please say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died for me and on the third day you rose again that I might be free from sin right now. I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me my sins and wash me with your blood. Make me your child and write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Sin and Satan has no more power over my life. In Jesus' mighty name, it's a new day. Amen and amen. God bless you.